Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 24th of September 2011. We've had two M flares and an X flare in the last 24 hours, and as I put this together, another long duration M flare is underway. Speaking of M&Ms, which were first made in the United States in 1941, what was the name of the candy that they were originally based on, and when was it first made? The answer will be given at the end. Since the last time we met, the Sun has produced a whole string of C flares, three M flares including an M7 flare, and an X1.9 flare. Let's take a look at these flares in a bit more detail. First the two M flares. The first one was a long duration event from region 12895 that peaked around about 2200 yesterday. That was followed by a fairly sharp M flare from region 1302 around about midnight last night. All these times are GMT of course. The X flare occurred at around about 9.30 this morning and was fairly sharp. That also was re from region 1302 and the long duration event I believe is from region 1302 as well and that is confirmed from this image from the EVE instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Currently we have four officially numbered regions on the disk, the same ones as we had yesterday. There are also two new unnumbered regions on the disk. Let's start as usual with up in the northwest corner with region 1295. This region seems to have grown hugely overnight and is now rather looking like 1302 as it came over the northeast limb a few days ago. 1295 has produced four C flares and an M flare. And interestingly enough, the small region following it, region 1296, also seems to have produced one C flare, even though it's decaying relatively rapidly. Next we move on to region 1301 that's nearing disk center. And here I disagree a little bit with Noah in that it claims that uh, 1301 is decayed, yet when I look at the comparison between these two pictures, it looks as though there are a lot more spots, particularly south of the region. You can also see in the bottom left hand corner, two new spots that have just come up in the last 24 hours. That is one of the new regions that I mentioned earlier. Last but by no means least is region 1302. This is a truly impressive region. Noah claims that its area is 840 millionths of the surface area of the Sun. I, I think it's more, however it depends whether you're just counting the umbra or you're including the penumbra in that. It's produced four C flares, two M flares and an X flare in the last 24 hours. Now some of you have asked for some idea of scale of this. So I've blown this picture up and put a scale image of the Earth in the center of the spot. It makes you feel rather insignificant, doesn't it? You can see the other new region down and near the southwest limb. This is not a re-emergence of region 1299. I've noticed that some of the solar sites have been carrying it as such. This region grew up behind where 1299 was. So this is a new region. So overall, solar activity has been very high for the last 24 hours and I don't see any reason why that should uh, calm down very much except for the loss of 1295 in the next 24 to 36 hours. Well let's follow the evolution of these regions by looking at the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. And There's so much going on in so many different places I think you're going to have to run through this part of the video several times and I would do so in full resolution mode so you can see all the details. In the transition region and low temperature coronal movies, you can see that region 1302 is producing a lot of ejecta, so we would expect at least some coronal mass ejections from all of these events. Plus also, two of the flares were long duration events, which are usually characteristic of CME producing events. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, we can see that there are two new regions coming over the east limb, one in the north and one in the south. Also interestingly there is a large loop joining region 1302 to the new region coming over the northeast limb. We can see from this composite Soho Coronagraph movie that there have been some CMEs particularly off of the east limb. Comet Elnin was supposed to start to become visible in the C3 field of view, the blue field of view, in the last um, 24 hours. I've looked for it but have not seen any evidence of it as yet. So if any of you have got sharp eyes and can see it, please let me know where it is. The temperature, density and speed of the solar wind all seem very uh, stable and low at the moment. The high energy electron flux seems to be relatively stable and we're already in a proton event from earlier flares and one wonders what level it will go to with the addition of these new flares. From the NOAA 15 satellite we see that the auroral zone is very quiet and also our KP index has been varying between just 0 and 1 
which is some of the lowest values we've seen for a long time. I've added this new little table which lists the space weather warnings that NOAA puts out. It shows that we've had no geomagnetic storms in the last 24 hours. We've had a very mild solar radiation storm, S level 1, and a moderate level radio blackout warning at level 3. That generally means that there's a widespread high frequency uh, interference in communications and the possibility of some low frequency interference in navigation systems. So in summary then, the X-ray background remains at the C1 level, the sunspot number is at 90, radio sun intensity is increased to 158 solar flux units, solar wind speed is dropped to 350 kilometers per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are very quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours remains relatively unchanged. I think C flares are certain, M flares are likely, and X flares are still possible. The sunspot number will remain at a moderate level. Coronal mass ejections remain likely. The solar wind speed will remain low at least for 24 hours, and uh, the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm are very low. From the composite coronal image, we can see there's a small region due to come over the northeast limb tomorrow. But the next major region is in the south and about five or six days away as yet. The answer to the trivia question about M&Ms is that the original suite was called Chocolate Beans and then Smarties Chocolate Beans and then now called Smarties. They were first produced in 1888. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.